Alright, so today real quick, I'm just going to read some uh, creepy encounters uh, Reddit stories because uh, I've been looking at that uh, thread lately and uh, it's getting a lot better because before, you know, it was like, it was kind of weird, it was kind of dead, it was like there wasn't a lot of people and the stories were just super short, kind of boring ass ones. So I'm hoping that these uh, are as good as they look. I didn't like pre-read the whole thing, I just kind of checked the title and everything and they look good, so I'm going to read a few of them. <laughs> This one's called, I think your daughter may have been drugged. When I, female, was in the seventh grade, 12 years old, I would experience nausea, vomiting, and extreme sleepiness after spending the night at the house of this particular friend. Let's call her Erin. This friend, also female, lived with her parents and her brother, who was five years older than us. After about five or six times experiencing these symptoms, my mom apparently noticed a pattern and sat me down to ask if I was drinking alcohol at Aaron's. I remember laughing at that question because I had never even tasted alcohol at that point in my life. But my mom's question was super serious. I told her no, and I thought Aaron's multitude of rodent pets made me feel ill. This sounded suspicious to my mom. She didn't let me spend the night at Aaron's house anymore but I was still allowed to spend the night at my other friends' houses. One night I was with a group of friends and we had movie night at Aaron's house, then went to spend the night at my friend Sarah's house, where I had slept over many times without any problems. The next morning I came home sick, nausea, vomiting, extreme sleepiness, and my mom took me to the doctor to get checked out. She told the doctor that she believed me when I said that I didn't drink alcohol but, given my hungover symptoms, apparently the doctor was incredulous and ran a blood alcohol test on me, which came back zero. Surprise, surprise. He said they could test my blood for GHB or Rufinol, but if I ingested the substance, it would no longer be detectable in the blood. Given the circumstances, he informed my mother that I was likely drugged at Aaron's house, since that is the only commonality preceding these symptoms. There wasn't enough evidence to show who drugged me and or press charges, so my mom just banned me from Aaron's house. I stopped going to Aaron's house completely and I have not experienced these symptoms since. After about two months of not going to Aaron's house, her older brother messaged me on Facebook and asked why I never came around anymore. He told me that he recorded some things on his DVR that I would like, so I should come over to watch them. I didn't know what to say, so I deleted Facebook. I never told my parents about that message, but in hindsight, Aaron's older brother was likely preying on me. Fuck, that is a creepy ass one. Dude, yeah, these are a lot, these are, uh, a lot different than Let's Not Meet, but that's why a, a lot of stories get, you know, kind of taken off Let's Not Meet, and they get told, you know, you know, put this on creepy encounters. Jesus, fuck, I think this one might be a little hardcore. Oh fuck. Alright, so we might end with this one. This might just be a little two-story video, but... Alright, so this one is called, I found out a man who is training beside me to be a counselor is a sexual predator. Alright, and this one does have a trigger warning on it, so this is an official trigger warning. We are in a professional graduate program for psychology and in our early to mid-twenties. I met him, I'll call him Nate, at the start of the academic year and thought he was very put together, charming, and sensitive. He was very good at group exercises where we practiced counseling skills. He had a way with words and came off as deeply compassionate. When we first met, I got a strange feeling from him that I couldn't quite put my finger on. However, he was a super charismatic guy with a trusting face and a dazzling smile, so I felt my guard come down. One weekend, we were drinking and watching movies at a mutual friend's house with a small group of people. Nate was very flirty with me and wanted to take shots with me in particular, which my friend Mia noticed. I was later told that he was saying how bad he wanted to hook up with me. By midnight, I was admittedly very drunk and warm and wanted to go change out of my sweater. While I was completely topless, I saw someone walk out by the corner of my eye. Thinking it was just someone walking to the bathroom, I didn't pay much attention. But then I noticed the person come back and peer through the doorway. Fortunately, Mia had come to check on me moments before and saw him looking into the room while I was unclothed. She blocked me from view and yelled at him to get out. I was confused because I thought I had imagined it even though Mia saw him too. 
Nate later said that I misperceived the situation and I believed it and buried the incident. Before you judge me or anyone else for not coming forward sooner, just know that this man is the king of gaslighting and was able to manipulate all of our professors who are experienced doctors of psychology. After that night, Mia told me why she didn't want to let me go alone when I left to change. Weeks before, she had been at a party with Nate where he took advantage of a drunk girl who could barely walk straight. He would have raped her, but his roommate heard what was going on and stopped him. Apparently, they argued with him for an hour before he agreed to leave the barely conscious girl alone. Then another woman came forward. She was in a relationship with Nate for two months and set boundaries in their sex life because she was saving herself for marriage. She said she didn't even realize they were having sex and didn't want to, but was told by Nate that that was normal and how relationships worked. Another classmate who was emotionally vulnerable at the time dated Nate for four weeks and said that he constantly projected, gaslighted, and manipulated her. When she confronted him about the concerns she had about his alleged behavior towards women, not knowing the severity of it, he berated her for being abusive to him, for bringing up things that happened years ago, which is a line he used on multiple women, and makes me think he has past allegations beyond this. He justifies all of his behavior no matter how egregious and claims he is actually the victim. The only person that tried to stand up to Nate, his roommate who stopped his sexual assault on that woman, was discredited and retaliated against by him. He made sure no one would take her seriously and intimidated slash manipulated her into staying quiet and not reporting the incident. He has lied to and deceived people to discredit his victims, and uses people's personal information and compassion against them. Unfortunately, the professors and managers only see the mask he wears and all love him. I am honestly scared of Nate and believe he is gaining the power of psychology to take advantage of vulnerable people and fulfill his own ego. I know in my gut that he will continue to hurt women, including future patients and students. He has his next hunting ground set too. He was appointed the training assistant of a counseling skills class where first year students disclose personal info in order to practice therapy skills. Most of his students will be young, compassionate women who won't know what hit them. I am terrified, so I brought this information along with witnesses and tons of hard evidence to the misconduct committee. They are taking it very seriously and it sounds like this motherfucker actually might be expelled and unable to practice psychology in the nation. This would be the best outcome. However, he was tipped off that women on our class, including me, are involved in a report against him. He is emotionally unstable and has a history of retaliation, so that's not great. He has already sent me a text saying that he needs to talk to me before things get out of hand. Right now, he thinks there is no way he will be held accountable for his actions. I truly think he believes he's done nothing wrong, but he has no idea how strong our case is. He's going to find out he's fucked when they notify him of the formal claim. Then it's a matter of time before he finds out I initiated the process that's going to bring him down. Kinda scary, but worth it. Nate is the ultimate wolf in sheep's clothing, and it's terrifying to think he could have become a counselor with that much power over vulnerable women. I can't believe a person like this exists, and I'm glad so many women have come forward to stop him. Damn, that one's fucking disturbing, bro. Yeah, dude, people are fucking evil. I bet there's a lot of shitty people who uh, get into psychology just to manipulate people. Alright, I'm trying to finish this video real quick before my camera dies. So, I'll see you guys later, and I'll try to be back uh, sooner than later. I know I've taken a, like a week off or so from the stories and just been posting music, but I'll get back to the stories, so right on.